Cheers, everybody, and welcome to the Driver Recruiting Happy Hour podcast. My name is Darren Williams. I'm the president at CDLjobs.com. With me, as always, is the president of 10-4 Recruiting and a man who was just recently cut from the 53-man roster of the Tennessee Titans, Matt Beach. Beach, couldn't make it as a kicker? Soccer background? So, true story, I actually kicked... Uh, I was a kicker for hospital, played soccer. And they're like, can you come and kick soccer uh, football? I'm like, I can try it. Kicked it. The furthest I could kick was 52 yards. Field goal. A, field, a 52 yard field goal? 52 yard field goal. With any accuracy? I just kicked. No, I mean, I just, it, it went and no, no, no accuracy. But it, I mean, that's the tricky part. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you could have done that accurately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no. Yeah, I did. I did. Went and punter. It was a field goal kicker. Extra point. That was that guy. And What was your percentage for the year? Well, hold on. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Went to practice. Did practice. Then went to a um, soccer match. When I went up for a ball, the head, the other team guy grabbed me around the waist uh, and he brought me down, and my leg was behind my neck, and that was it for football and soccer for my sophomore year, and I never went back. But you know, the dream, the dream I could have been. You know, you never know. I mean, I'm Your going. NFL up. career was sidetracked by soccer. No, yeah, well, you could have. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it could have been there. Fifty-two is no joke. Fifty-two yard field goals. That's the and, and, and there's a technique. That's the thing. There is an actual technique. It's when you, I mean, every, when you watch, like right now, when I watch people kick field goal, right, they take the step back, three steps over, line up, you know, do all, I mean, it's a technique. I mean, it really is. And so, uh, yeah, I got to learn all that. Did you have that or were you just a straight toe kicker when you came? No, no, I don't toe ball. I mean, toe ball, there's zero accuracy in toe ball. Zero. The only guy that had 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 was a guy that had the foot. The shoe that was like, I mean, he held the record forever. What was his name? Uh, Dempsey, I think, was his last name. That was the only guy that I knew that was a successful <laughs> what he had as a toe kicker. I mean, even right now in soccer, if you kick a toe ball, you're going to break your toe, but you have zero accuracy whatsoever. Break your toe? You ever kicked a football or a soccer ball with your toe? You ever toe balled it and just said, oh, that felt great? Not in a long time, but I, they didn't really have soccer when I – it was a kid. No, but they, don't, they don't even have it. They still don't have it in Iowa. Or do y'all? Well, it's bigger around here. There's a team from Cedar Rapids that just won nationals. Hmm, not bad. Some 16U or 18U or. No. Do you do auctions? You ever been part of an auction? Like an online auction or a live auction? A cattle auction? Yeah. My wife, they did. A, they had an auction this past weekend. So she's in antiques. And so I got to run that part of it. So I do a little auction. You were the auctioneer? I wouldn't say I was the auctioneer, but I can chant a little bit. You know, chanting. Let's hear it. All right, now, hey, what are you going to give me for it? Now, one, it's more, that's more carnival. That's more carnival. Yeah, you sound like you're going to guess somebody's weight. Pitch him in when I'm out on a prize every time. Hey, there goes another one. All right, now, <laughs> folks. <laughs> yeah, but, holy cow, we got to get out of this. Hey, we've got Rachel Lovell with us today. A fellow Tennessean Mm -hmm. who is the vice president of people operations at Ascend. Hello, Rachel. Hello, guys. How are you? Gravy. Well, you see what I deal with here. So, (laughs) yeah, your own conclusion. And football. I am very impressed with the 52 yard kick because I probably couldn't make it 20. It is something. So, Congratulations on that. Not even close to the field goal, but it went that far. They were like, nice. And kind of like, it's got to be accurate. I'm like, uh, that was every so, bit of you didn't that have was all I had in that. <laughs> Maybe you're more for kickoffs. That's it. There That's you it. go. No. I mean, you got the whole field to work with there. Every bit of it. All of it. I love it. So, Rachel, where are you in relationship to Beach in the state of Tennessee? Are you far enough away that? Uh, he can't I come am. frequently visit. I'm on the total opposite side of the state. So he's in east and I'm in west. 
Um, so I'm in West Tennessee. Our offices are in Jackson, Tennessee, um, probably midway between Memphis and Nashville. So mm. born in a small town close to here called McLemoreville um, and just been here all my life. So you go from Chattanooga to Murfreesboro mm -hmm. and there's nothing. It's farmland, farmland, farmland. Then you hit Murfreesboro and you're like, oh, this is all, all right, finally. You just described to Iowa. Yeah, and then you hit Nashville and you're just so over the top with, wow, this is just nuts. So where, I mean, I'm, I'm ready, I need a break. To then you get on uh, 40 heading towards Memphis and there was nothing, nothing from mm -hmm. Nashville until you hit Jackson. And then you see the new baseball stadium that's, well, that's not new. It's been around for a little while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then they have a they have one sushi restaurant in Jackson. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was now in Jackson. Too. So if you ago. ever come, yep, if you ever come, go to Asia Garden or Asahi, either one. They've got mm -hmm. good. They've got good sushi. Good. Um, Asia Garden's got good egg rolls too. So you need to visit this, there. Hold on, hold on. This deer right here. That that's one. Uh, down point mm -hmm. right. That, that's a Jackson, Tennessee. Good. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you blink when you go through Jackson and you don't see oh, you do. you get to Memphis. And you think, but you think you're close to Memphis. Like, okay, Jack, we're, I mean, it is still a haul to Memphis. Mm -hmm. Is there yep. any About state an hour, longer? hour and a half. Is Tennessee the longest east to west? No, probably Texas. No, Texas is. Yeah, Texas. But man, Tennessee's mm -hmm. got to be second. It's close. A long state. It is. Very yep. so, absolutely. Rachel, tell us about Ascend. It's relatively new. New name. It is. It is. So we were a growing brand, uh, but we're not new to the industry. So um so to tell you a little bit about me and how I got started in the transportation industry, which tell you a little bit about Ascend, um, I started at our company called Milan Express at the time. I started in 2006 in the operations division and then in 2015 moved to the recruiting division and in that time uh, we went through an ownership change and changed our name from Milan Express to Milan Supply Chain Solutions um, really to give the whole package to, um, to all. So we're a distribution, we've got logistics, we've got um, shuttle. We've got all, everything and anything you need. One stop shop. We're the total solution. So, um, in twenty twenty, about twenty twenty one, we started throwing out. You know, hey, you know, we want to change our brand to Ascend. We have an acquisition. We had acquired JMD Services at the time, and we want to become one. We're one team. We continue to say we're one team, but we keep operating in our own name. So we're one team, one vision. And we formed Ascend. So in January of 2022, we rolled it out and have not looked back. And it's it's been great. It's been awesome to be part of something that we're building even more. So we're leveraging technology. We're people first culture. We're people obsessed, driver obsessed, um, customer obsessed, shipper obsessed, all the obsessions and we really felt like, you know, this brand is what that means. Not saying that our other brands and our other company had not meant that, but this was the time for us to build something together. Fantastic. And 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 very successfully. I mean, you the growth that's just been shared is 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 pretty phenomenal in a tough market. It is. It is. So, I attribute that to just our complete team being completely hands-on, hands on deck, all in. Um, the great part about it is our CEO, he goes in when he's here in the Jackson area and he goes in and meets the drivers in orientation, goes on the whiteboard and writes his phone number down and says, call me if you have a problem. Um, most companies would probably cringe if their CEO or any of their C-suites were going in and giving phone numbers out, um, but it's, it's open door policy. Um, he's, he's just, he's in there, he gets in the trenches. Um, we were shorthanded during the COVID time frame, and he was in there answering the phones and, and what do you need me to do to help? Um, so it's, it's a great brand. We're growing. We continue to, to look at it. How are we going to grow even more? 
Um, but how are we going to do it right? And how are we going to do it right by our people? How are we going to be? Because you don't want to grow and become um, one of the mega carriers that doesn't care about um, their people, their drivers. Everybody cares about their people and their drivers, but you got to make sure your people actually acknowledge that and know that and trust the process and believe in your culture and believe in, in your values. And, and that's something we're trying to continue to do. Rachel, do you, <clears throat> I probably warned you that Darren would drop off and he has dropped off. <laughs> and now <laughs> you're the host. This happens every podcast. And oh, so you're bad. the host. We're going to keep going. <laughs> We're not going to stop. Yeah. And I absolutely okay. love it. So when my daughter is 16, doesn't, doesn't want to drive, hates driving, I am begging her to get her license. When did you get your license? <laughs> so I will be in her corner on this. I did not get my driver's license until I had secured this job in 2006 and I was turning, or I had just turned 20, 20 years old. I was a professional passenger, um, <laughs> did not, I played a lot of sports. So, I attribute a lot of this. I had zero interest. Um, my parents really didn't push it because I did play two sports. I was a dual sport, so travel, softball, and then basketball constantly. So it was very rare that I had free time, period. Um, but I really didn't care about being the, the driver. I didn't want the responsibility. I just wanted to control the radio, and I'm the professional passenger. Um, so I remember coming to my interview with Roy Mabry, who was mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman mm -hmm. that I interviewed with, and he called me that afternoon and he said, I want to make a job offer to you. I want you to start Monday and, and you need to come in and sign your paperwork and bring your driver's license and your social security card. <laughs> Great. I said, the only thing is I don't have a driver's license. I just have my social and an ID, but I don't have my physical license. And he said, you've got to have a license. And I said, well, I'm, I didn't apply for a driving job. I'm going to be in the office. And he said, yeah, but you got to have your driver's license. So I went that afternoon, um, went to the, the DMV, took my sister's minivan with me and got my driver's license and came back that afternoon, signed all my paperwork and started that Monday. Nice. So what was your first position? It was in operations as a fleet manager. So I was in the local division, LRS, and uh, was dispatch, and then started really picking up on dispatch customer service and planning. And at that point, our division was smaller than it is now. It was 90 trucks or less. And everybody was kind of the hybrid role. That's how we morphed into that. And absolutely loved it. Worked in there till. I guess 2011, 2012 timeframe, and then moved over to customer service for our over the road division. Nice. When, when did you start recruiting? When did you say, hey, I'm fixing to make this change over to recruiting? It was in March of 2015. Okay. I had gotten burnout completely in customer service. That's, that's one of those roles that you either love it or you're not going to be successful at it. And I loved it, but I had been doing it for so long. And I was still trying to find myself and find my place up until 2015. It was just a job. It was just paycheck. Of course, I loved it and I had a passion about it, but not a passion that just burned and, and was with me all the time. And I was thinking about it all the time. It was just, I'm here, I'm doing it, I'm giving it my all, but I'm going home and I'm disconnecting. And in March of 2015, um, I just decided, you know, there's got to be something else. There's got to be the next. Step. I've done this. I'm good at it. I know what I'm doing. I had probably half of the top 25 accounts personally just on me. And I thought there's got to be something more. So I walked into my boss's office and I said, is there anything at Jackson? I would just, I'd love to try something new, even if it's in maintenance, I'll do whatever. And he said, well, actually we have a driver recruiting position open. And I said, I can't recruit. And, and Billy said, yes, you can. He said, you can do this. This is something you would actually be good at. It took six conversations um, and, and really some, some getting over some self-doubt because I just knew that I wouldn't be successful. I, I thought, you know, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. I have no clue. And 
Um, so in April of 2015, I moved over to the recruiting department and have never looked back. It, awesome. It's been the best career move I could have made. I started recruiting in October of 2014. Had no idea. And the interview was, can you build relationships in life? Yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Can you travel in life? I can definitely travel. Because at the time, I was traveling 32 weeks out of the year. And mm -hmm. it, was time, it was time to get off the road. And even then, they're like, can you do 15? I said, I can do 20. And they're like, okay, sure. I mean, that was like a mini vacation for me, right? Being home a little bit more. Yeah. But still, and even then, it kind of, it's still, you know, having kids and family, you know, it's like, okay, we got to pull back even a little bit. But still, absolutely loved it. I mean, my whole focus was trying to grow the, the student program for the carrier. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, and it, it was great. I mean, the relationships, that's what I love. You know, someone always asked, why do you, and let me ask you this, why do you, why do you love recruiting? And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll hear your response and I'll tell you my response. So my reason for loving it is I am, su I found that I am super passionate about the organization. I was hired right out of high school. I have found my family. Basically, I've grown up with the people here and I love to be able to help someone start something new because I know our organization has everyone's best interest at mind and at heart. I know that this place is a great place to work for. I've been here 16 years now and getting someone in the industry with a new fresh start, we're going to take care of them. It, it's getting that I'm starting something new. It's scary also because you want to make sure that it's the right move for that individual in their home because it's not just them moving. Typically, they have a family or they have, you know, they're, they are changing their life to come here. And you've got to be passionate about that change. You've got to be, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to work. I remember one time I had a driver call and I was on the phone with them and they just broke down because they were in the middle of, of personal issues and a relationship change and didn't know if this was the right move. And, and after talking, you're almost like a therapist in a way too. <laughs> so recruiting is not just recruiting and in sales. You are sometimes a therapist, a travel expert and all kinds of different things. But talking with that individual to say, hey, I understand you're worried. I understand that this is a big change. That's why I want to make sure this fit is right for you. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And then getting to meet them, getting to see them in orientation. When, when we were actually on site recruiting in the orientation um, office, we got to meet them. So at driver appreciation the next year, I was just like, hey, and, and, and we have a, a solid retention rate. So you see those people and continue to form that bond with them. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with just that. Yeah, I love A, the relationship side of it, right? But there's nothing like finding somebody a job. There's nothing like, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I like it even more on the student side because some of these, a lot of the drivers, this is like their second or third chance, right? Of I've got to do something. And, yeah. and the ones that's not like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm done doing this. I've traveled here. I'm, I've done construct, what, whatever it might be. I just can't get my class. I want to get on the road and find out what it's like to make a lot of this money. And so to see their excitement, and I used to see it. Now I don't see it as much anymore. But when they would get their, when they get, you know, activated, hired on, and they hand them their, their idea, their paperwork and all that, and you just see it like, this is it. This is, this is my mm -hmm. big boy job, you know, in the sense of I'm fixing them, I'm, I'm fixing to actually start some, something special. And there was nothing better to see that in their face. I absolutely loved it. Good stuff. Darren, are you back from your bathroom? Yeah. Good to have you back. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I jinxed myself. Because yeah, you I did. Yeah, you did. I researched this. And when I say I researched this, people researched this and told me that there was a compatibility issue in Google Chrome and Zoom. And so I went and I used a different uh, browser and I thought that would work. You ever seen a, 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 a beta? you know what I say when a beta, a fish, is that what it is, a beta? I don't, yeah. You know, I've heard call Rachel a beta. Does he not look like he's yep. in a beta fish tank right now? I, yeah, that's a He does. Oh, he looks like he's in the weeds. <laughs> now I'm on my phone. I feel like we ought to be going. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> now I'm on my phone. Now I'm operating off my phone. So I'm 
<laughs> I'm trying to get there. I'm telling you, man. Oh, we, my life. Well, hurry up. Well, what's the question? I mean, come on, man. You've been gone. You've been on your break forever. I mean, you guys are having you know, Rachel just owning the show the entire time. I didn't want to interrupt because you guys were having a heart to heart about changing lives. And I agree 100%. That was one of the very satisfying things about driver recruiting that, um, that I missed. But I didn't want to break that up. No, it's all right. Rachel, here's a question. Bourbon, okay. bourbon or tequila? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, so I'll put it this way. Tequila in the spring, summer time frame, bourbon in the fall, winter. I like it. Mm -hmm. I go with that. I get that. Yeah. I get it. I tequila get it. or vodka in the summer? Ooh. Yeah, both, I guess. So, like, have y'all, have you tried the high noons? Have you tried these? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The lime is my favorite. Um, and the pineapple. Mm -hmm. Grapefruit. But I'm yeah, not sure that I So now we have two Darren's on the screen. And the glasses. <laughs> we are blessed. <laughs> this is called a blessing. <laughs> Honest to God. He's out of the fishbowl. He's jumped out of his tank. <laughs> no, he's like Nemo. No, no I can't <laughs> figure out how to leave the other me. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Just another day in the life, Rachel. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, it looks Rachel, like you have tell us about your 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 uh, recent uh, vacation you guys went on. It looked cool. Yeah, so we went to Eminence, Missouri. It is the cross country trail ride. Um, it's in the Ozark Mountains, probably about four hours um, from West Tennessee area, and it is just a great time. It's a camping. Um, people go and ride their horses. We do not have horses. We don't ride horses, but um, you can take your side by side. So we've got a Polaris Ranger and we take it. You can go on different trail rides and whatnot. Zero service. Um, so it's like almost taking a step back in time. Um, the kids have to actually look at us and have conversations and interact. Um, but it's just a great time. You know, people are there and and it's just a huge campground. They've got a uh, the Jack's Fork River that comes through and you sit out the water and you can go float every day if you want to. You can go fishing. Um, the kids have a blast. There's a dance every night and they learned how to, to line dance and they thought that was the best thing ever. And um, it just, it disconnects you from all the social media, all of the, the internet and all the, the things that they get so obsessed with. And they actually are able to take a step back and have conversations and sit around a campfire and tell stories or listen to, to the stories from the, the people or the other generations that have been there. Um, my father-in-law has been going for about 27 years now. My husband's been going for 15 to 18. Um, so the kids have, have had a blast starting that all back up. So it, it was great. Um, highly recommend going. In 92 and 93, I used to go line dancing. Really? Yes. In jorts. Jorts and cowboy boots. <laughs> and I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell myself. So there was, my mother was always into like jazzercise. Remember that? Jazzercise and all these. Your brother or mother? Mother. 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 Yeah. Jazzercise. Other little, you know, I remember when Weight Watchers first started. And she had all, but she loved a little exercise. Moment. And there was this one place that did line dancing. Mm -hmm. I went with her multiple times. She's like, you got to go with me. I can't go here and not have someone to dance with. There's like this weird old dude that I don't want your dad to know that's trying to dance with me. Can you please? And I went multiple times with her to the point to where when it came to boot scoot and boogie, I was tearing it up. I mean, could tear mm -hmm. it up. the electric slide. I had that. Yes, that's my favorite. When? Is the oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Is the next time we're going to be together in a bar where I can request a song? I, I have to see this. You have to. It's it's a match. Yes. It's magical. It's magical. And uh, so we there was so I learned. Oh gosh, what was there was so many boots. Good, there was so many dance songs that came out for the grapevine, or I don't know, it was another one. What was it? And they were hard. 
Oh, difficult. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, it's Patna Joe's pretty hard. Yes, it's Patna Joe's pretty hard. Pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like the whole. Are you that, talking like, difficult to learn or difficult, uh, like cardio yeah. wise? Both. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're sore. Yeah, definitely. And then I would come back and be like, my oh. favorite one. No, go ahead. No, my favorite one is the electric slide, um, followed by Copperhead Road. Ooh, I got to see. So, that. Rachel, were no. you an experienced line dancer before this vacation? So, um, I've always known how to do the electric slide. Um, I learned that probably back in middle school when when all the different songs were coming out. Um, I assume that's I part of the, the curriculum the in cha -cha. Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. after it's after school curriculum but yes mm -hmm. sure enough <laughs> but copperhead road i learned it this year last year i wanted to learn it i didn't get it down pat um didn't go to the dances every night because again they have a dance every single night from saturday night to the next saturday night so um we we do things at night like we have a, a movie night we have a cook a night that we cook breakfast at midnight to 1 a.m they have an up-and-coming nashville star that'll come in so dylan carmichael came this year um so we have activities but the one thing i said was i'm going to learn how to do copperhead road and we learned it this year and it's hard if until you get it and then when you get it it's easy it's just it's a lot of movement but not as much as cotton on joe I mean, and I where was this place again? I, I didn't catch the name. Eminence, Missouri. So it's in South Missouri, like around the Ozark. Never even heard of it. Mm -hmm. Y'all have a, yep. that same trip? Is it the same trip you guys are doing for fall, fall break or do y'all have a fall break trip planned? Nope. Going to fall break, we'll go to the beach. Um, it's always on my birthday. So I like to, to tie that in that this is the birthday trip. We'll Whoa. go to Orange Beach this year. Oh, Orange Beach. Orange remember. Beach. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, is that yep. in the Ozarks? Is that like a little area right no. there? No. Alabama, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's in Alabama. Um, we usually go to Gulf Shores or Orange Beach, one or the other. Last year, we ventured out and did St. George Island. Um, it was good. It's a long drive, though. It's almost a 12-hour drive from where we live. Say. I'd much rather just go there to Orange Beach. We rented a Airbnb. I had never heard you could do this, but we did an Airbnb, but it was a, uh, um, not an RV, a trailer, camper. Mm -hmm. And the, the guy showed up, dropped it off at the campground, had it all plugged in, you know, water, pull it all that and I was like, thank you and yeah. we stayed there <laughs> and air <laughs> yeah had air had it all i mean then that was done we we left and he showed up said that yeah, everything's good i'll take it from here wow welcome mm -hmm. <laughs> yep that's what we do when we go camping uh we rent a camper because we we only go camping once a year maybe twice a year and my husband's dad, my father-in-law, has a camper that he camps in, uh, but we don't. So we just rent one every year. And there's a gentleman that's got 15 or 20 campers. He comes, he sets them up, he turns the water on, the air, he gets all the awnings and stuff pulled out and get your stuff ready. And you bring your sheets and your inside contents and your mat and whatever else you need, and you're good to go. What a great idea. The I didn't know that existed. Oh, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You got to do, do it. See, this is the, this is the, this is the episode for people that are in the industry, especially the recruiting side to go, how do you, how do you, how do you find time to turn it off? For Rewind. Yeah. Oh, relax right. a little bit. That's a for great relax. idea without a, without an investment and without all the headache that right. goes along with camping. Worth every penny. Worth mm -hmm. every penny. And it's cheaper. Yeah. Most of the time it's cheaper than than renting a condo hotel room and and you get that outdoor experience. And and to, to Matt's point, recruiting is such a hard it's not really hard, but you're fully invested. It's a it's a nonstop um department, nonstop career. You've got to force yourself to take that time. And the only way you're gonna take that time is to go somewhere that is secluded, that's that has limited or no service 
to say, okay, I'm putting a line in the sand on September 30th, I'm leaving and I'm going on vacation. And then it also is trust in your team, trust in your, your peers, trust in your mentors and, and anyone that has to do with the business that they're going to continue on um, and keep the business. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that prevents burnout. It prevents employees lack of engagement. It actually keeps them engaged because they're re-energized and recharged, ready to, to kick butt when they get back. Yeah. yeah. Recruiting is the only department that you never, ever reach the goal. There's always a goal, but you never, I mean, you, you do, but then it starts over again Monday or next month, or, I mean, there's mm -hmm. never, you're never done ever. I mean, it's, it's exhausting. Right. I, I, it, it is, it's a tough, tough job. Yeah. And you said it best, right? When you go, you're, you're a therapist, you're a travel agent. I mean, yes. right. You're a travel agent. You're, you, uh, um, you're a mediator, <laughs> a mediator, a negotiator, mediator, yeah. negotiator, right. not only with your recruiters, but drivers, operations, safety. You're the, we're, we're the, we're a lot with the middle person going, okay, what do you want? How do I, how do I, make, how, do right. I make, how do I get you in this car? <laughs> right. And party planners. And not saying yeah, that party we're planner. party, party we're planner, doing, but events. That's the when part. I, events, I'm good at that. When you're doing, when you're doing all those different things, driver appreciation is coming up, you know, how are we going to connect with drivers? And, and it's not because that's my, you know, I'm split down the middle. I'm recruiting in HR. So I want to make sure we're taking care of our employees. But then I'm thinking with my recruiting side of my brain, how do we attract more drivers? You know, one year driver appreciation, we opened the gates and we allowed anybody. You don't have to be a driver for our company to enjoy driver appreciation. Come have a hamburger on us. Come have the, the barbecue or whatever we had that day because we have a, a an event every single day through that week. How do we how do we connect with them? And it's not we don't we weren't bum rushing them and saying, well I'll give you this plate if you sign this um, you know, this application. Just thanking them because that's all that that's that's what they need. They need to be thanked. It's not that they need to be bum rushed and you know, you got to sign this application to be able to get this one thing. Just thank you. I, I got I to gotta share. A, it's, they're not a sponsor, Darren, but I am going to give them a shout out. Mm -hmm. I met this. I met this group at a the previous trucking event I went to. And they sell popcorn. That's what they do. You would think at a trucking event, why in the world would they, they make popcorn? I mean, that's what this, this young girl, her name is Sydney, I believe. She um, she started the business thing was when she was fourteen of just selling different flavors of popcorn. Now her whole family does it, and it's called almost famous. I know it's backwards. Almost famous popcorn. You have to check them out. They have a flavor called Crunchberry. So like Crunchberry. You know popcorn, why the cereal? Because it's from Cedar Rapids. That's right. Yes, they are. Yes, they're yes. from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They're ten miles from here, and I'm telling you what. They have something called the Chicago mix. It's like cheese popcorn and caramel popcorn, which sounds awful. And it is the awesome. best thing you'll ever eat. And so they were doing like, what's a, they were kind of saying, here's a, here's a driver appreciation or even your recruiter appreciation, some ideas and use our popcorn. Love it. Absolutely. love Yeah. It. So almost famous. Almost famous popcorn. You got to check it out. I mean, even I was, I was looking, I was yeah. like, I don't know what flavors to get. I got a Dilly Dilly, which is a pickled flavored popcorn. That sounds awful. It probably is. I'm going <laughs> to like it. I'm going to like it. The Wisconsin cheddar I had, lemon cookie was delicious. I didn't have that one. Um, they got one that's like a really fire hot one. I forgot the name of it. They got some fun names. Yeah. But. They've got a big storefront in Cedar Rapids that is just, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's in all the stores here. It's everywhere here. Yeah. But anyway, I, I thought I wanted to bring them up because it was funny to see them at a trucking event and then going, well, why are you here? Well, here's some ideas that we have. And here's where I'm like, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So would they sell them in little bag or would they do the, I mean, you can get them in small. Yeah. Small bags. Tin, and then you can get them in the nice, like a box that's sent to you. A tin. Yeah. They have the tins yeah. that you can get yeah. them. Yeah. Oh yeah, I ordered. I've already ordered two boxes. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> wonderful. You'll have to let me know how they are. Oh, I'll send I'll you some. Look them up. Yeah, the Crunchberry. Send you some. Yeah, Crunchberry was amazing. 
That'd all right, oh, Rachel, I will send good. you some Crunchberry. Popcorn. I'll send you Crunchberry popcorn. Awesome. Thank you. I love popcorn. I've got a skinny pop right here on my desk. <laughs> oh, skinny pop. My wife is in the skinny pop. She loves I'm it. not sure there's anything <laughs> skinny pop about Crunchberry nah. popcorn. No, there's there. not. There's no. Yeah, there's absolutely no skinny. That's why I want it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I prefer it because this skinny pop is. Um, the cheddar's good, the white cheddar. Um, the, all of them are good, but not the movie popcorn, the movie butter, you know, thick, extra. It's not the same. It's not the same. Insane. I watched Top Gun Maverick for like the fifth time this weekend, by the way. The new one? Yes. Oh, yeah. Still haven't seen it. You're missing out. Mm, you're missing it. You're missing out. Uh, Big time. Uh, one of my top it's probably my top one of my top five for 2022 i'm reserving all this because 2022 is not over but it's it's top three for sure yeah mighty fine movie mighty fine how many movies do you guys watch i, I don't think i've watched five movies in 2022 yet I'm see, now i don't i don't have cable but i have all the little apps right i got you know mm -hmm. it, it going about how much i spend on each app i might as well just get cable but um, yep. I mean, so, so wait a minute, Beach. I can watch so you. I can watch YouTube Shorts. The uh, this different little things of you know little different shows here and there. Um, but uh, so what you're admitting on World Wide Web here yeah. to our to our tens of listeners yeah. is that you pirated the Top Gun movie. You're not you're not going and buying it at the theater. You oh, pirated. No, no, it's you went out, to the theater. It's I watched it at the theater, and now it's on Prime Video. It is already? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Within 30 days, they're out of the video. They're out and they're on mainstream. Yes. I didn't know that. Holy cow. Yeah. We're sitting there watching. So now you have no excuse. You got to Yeah, go I guess. It. I think we even have Prime Video. I'll have to. Somebody will have to set it up for me, but we'll have to watch that. Well, it's funny because my wife actually said, did you just steal this movie? And it wasn't Maverick. It was a group. <laughs> And the new Gru uh, movie, the Minions movie, and we're watching. She's like, I go, I'm going to watch this new movie. She's like, it's not out. I'm like, okay, sure. So I play it, and my son's sitting there, and they're thinking it's like a YouTube short, like a, you know, yeah. when we're watching it, 45 minutes still going. And she's like, did you steal this? <laughs> the first thing I'm like, I'm, I'm not smart enough for that. I'm not smart enough, but no, I, I did not steal it. We have friends. I guess that, we had friends, and they were missionaries in China, and they came back with all these videos. And they're like, "I'm watching it. I'm like, you know, okay, I'm going to go to the theaters. Watch she's Oh, we got that movie. You want to watch? I'm like, No, you don't. She's like, Yeah, watch this TV. And all of a sudden, you'd be watching, and suddenly you see some guy get up to go to the restroom. You know? Yeah, somebody's <laughs> filming it on their phone. Oh man, <laughs> what kind of mission work were you doing in China? <laughs> 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 so rachel if maverick's not the number one what's the number one movie of 2022 that i need to go see i don't i i, I like maverick it's going to be super hard we went and saw so here in jackson and i'm sure they have it at theaters everywhere else across the united states every tuesday is the deal day so it's five dollar tickets and it's a cheap thing for us to do as a family every tuesday night so we'd get off work um, be at the 6 30 7 o'clock movie we saw um the new jurassic world we saw the new uh marvel thor movie i think it's marvel yeah thor um where the crawdad thing that one was good but out of all of them so far that i've seen maverick was top it's top i'm just reserving my top until the end of the year to see if anything comes out that trumps it see if anything better's out there see i can't mm -hmm. I, I don't know but if it's I, I would like any of those not a real big movie guy, just not. And I don't want to yeah. watch where the crowd well, you'll like Maverick. I don't like crying at movies. That seems like a oh, it's not crying. It's a it's really good. It's actually it's really good. It's not a cry movie. It's not. No, mm -mm. I thought it was. I thought where the crowd Dad sing. It's been mm -hmm. the bestseller for like two years, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not what I think yep. it is. It's not scary. You is watch it? it. No, when you watch, no, it's a it's a mystery. But when you watch Maverick, I know you will. There's going to be a part in it where you're going to hear 
talk to me, Beach. Talk to me. Yes. And the movie's going to say something else, but Darren's going to hear, talk to me, Beach. Talk no, to I'm me. not. Yeah, you are. You asked a question a couple of podcasts ago, and we never got the answer. You said in the original Top Gun, maybe I'm remembering this wrong. Mm, yep. There was a truck driving school mentioned. There was. What was it? It's time uh, to give the answer. We forgot. Oh, uh, you know what? We need more people to comment, and, and they need to watch this podcast. And then, well, I yeah. think we forgot people to. No, ask them to no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, hey, but there is a truck driver <laughs> in Top Gun. Do you know what? Do you remember the original Top Gun, Rachel? I do. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what I truck driving it. school was? Do you want to mention it now, or do you want to make people? No, go ahead. The, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Know, nobody's known the answer. I, hmm, if I get it right, well, I don't know. I you don't will know. get. I think, I, let me think. Very about about a Matt Beach face sticker. <laughs> and for something that you might really want, Crunchberry popcorn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm okay. not quite sure that I remember exactly. It wasn't like one. Is it one of our our mega carriers within the industry that's still going, or is it one that was just a made up? I was trying to find out what that. I forgot the name of. <laughs> so we have a trivia question that nobody. <laughs> there is. It's in there. Goose says it. Goose says it. I can't remember, but I looked it up, and it was. It was a guy in a cowboy hat doing his commercials. It was actual that one. That one little chunk right there sums up perfectly this podcast. <laughs> that in a nutshell, that's what this podcast is right there. <laughs> Rachel, yeah, we have we taken to up too much of your is. time. We're going to yeah, let you go, good. Rachel. We've taken up too much of your time. It's uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, we know how busy you are, and um, thank you, thank you very much for coming on. It's good to talk to you. Absolutely. Thank you both for having me. Thank you both for everything you do for the industry. I'm telling you, it does not go unnoticed. You are both amazing, just stewards of the industry. And I appreciate all the mentor, all the the phone calls. You know, Beach, I hit you up every once in a while, probably once a week, <laughs> to say, let me bounce this idea off of you. So I truly appreciate it. And thank you all for what you do. Well, we appreciate you more than you know. Thank you for the nice words. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Be safe and keep on trucking.